Welcome to the Multi-Taction MT Canvas tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to get content into the MT Canvas software solution. Before we jump into the product, let's take a moment to review the kinds of things we're going to take a look at. First of all, we'll create notes. So this is for rapid ideation, quick note taking. And once you have a note on the screen, you can do a number of things with it. You can augment it with content either from the web, simply by typing text in from the virtual keyboard, or you can annotate it. Now, depending on what type of device you've got, you may have a pen uh, that you can do that with, or you may be using a finger, depending on the type of touch device you're using. We'll also look at how to get web content straight onto a canvas. So bring up a browser, maybe snapshot some of that content, maybe use the entire browser. We'll also look at how to snapshot content from a direct feed. So in this tutorial, I'll have a PC that's running a PowerPoint presentation that's connected to Canvas. We'll take a snapshot of some of that content and use it on the Canvas to augment the ideas that we've put into the notes. We'll also look at how to take content from a USB stick and how to take content that's already been put into a file folder but will be accessed to Canvas during the session. OK, so let's begin with the simplest content creation, which is using notes. To access the notes option, simply touch and hold to bring up the finger menu. And you can see the notes option is up there just on the top left. I have a number of colors I can choose from. I'm going to go for yellow for this one. Now, let me just bring that menu back up. There's quite a few options on here, just as there are other options in the other menu areas. Don't worry about that right now other tutorials that we go through all of those menu options just for now let's concentrate on creating the note so it's very straightforward touch and hold to bring up the finger menu touch the note select your color and there you have a couple of notes okay so now i have my notes up how do i get content into them well first of all the easiest is just simply to type notes in using the virtual keyboard I can also put notes in using annotation. So I'm going to select the pen. Now remember, if you're using a multi-taction display, you won't have to do this because the screen already knows as soon as you, the difference between a touch and an infrared pen. But uh, here I'm using my finger to annotate directly onto the screen. So that's another way of putting content in. Another way of bringing content directly into a note is to augment it with information directly from the web. And again, if I touch and hold to access my finger menu, the next option alongside the notes is the image search on the web. So in this case, I'm going to search for multi-taction. And straight away, I get all the images off the web related to that search. And I can move backwards and forwards through this list until I find something I want. Now, to, to bring content from this list on directly onto the canvas, I literally touch and hold and drag that content onto the canvas itself. Now that I have the content here, I can resize it and add it directly to my note. Now, once the content's in the note, it will stay with it. And then if I resize that note or move it around, you'll notice that the the other item that I've added to that note stays with it and scales with it at the same rate. This is actually really important because I can also annotate directly onto this object. And you'll notice that now when I resize the object, the annotation that's on top of it stays exactly in the right place. This is really important if you're annotating a diagram or for instance, putting uh, marking a point on a map, that annotation must scale and stay in exactly the right place. And you can see that no matter how much I scale and change that, it stays perfectly in the right place. That's actually quite difficult to do, and it's one of the real strengths of, of MT Canvas. OK, so I've taken content from the web. Um, you can also add directly a web page. So the next search down on that finger menu takes me out to a Google search. So if I pin, and this is important when you use the browser, 
in order for the browser to actually function, you have to pin it. So you'll notice that I pinned the top of that browser window. And so now if I do a search for multi-taction, it actually takes me out directly to the web search. And because it's pinned, I can access the entire hotspots or um, I can navigate this website exactly as the original website was intended. I'm literally inside of a browser. And so what I can do now is I can, once I unpin it, I can resize that and I could add that website to the note. And this is actually quite powerful because if you think about how you normally do brainstorming sessions where you put post-it notes up on the wall, being able to augment an idea with content directly from the website, whether that's an image or an actual browser with a website in it that you want to use to help tell the story better or provide a bit more context, makes it so much easier when you come back and look at your notes to work out what exactly it was you meant when you put that information in there. Very often with brainstorming sessions, you just end up with these huge boards of post-it notes, and it's very difficult then to to take away exactly what the original idea was, and more specifically what the context of the idea was. Okay, let's take another look at how we can actually use a web browser to bring information onto the canvas. So again, to access the main browser, bring up the finger menu, select the World Wide Web icon, and remember it's important to pin the browser window in order for you to use it. So I'm going to go back and search for the multi-taction website again. And now that I've got the website up, I want to be able to use something off this website to either to supplement my idea or just simply to use on the canvas as part of telling the story. And so the way I'm going to do that is take a snapshot of something that's on the page. To get to the snapshot menu, bring up the finger menu again and you'll see this little camera to the left of the of the note creation. This gives me a window that I can move around and also I can resize it. Anytime you see this checkered triangle in the corner of a window means that you can resize it simply by touching and holding and moving that window around. So in this case what I want to do is take a snapshot of just the showcase image there. So just touch the camera button and hey presto there's my snapshot so i can turn off that uh, web browser window and there i have now an item that i can pin to my canvas and use that as part of the content so again you can use whole websites if you want to because you can leave the browser pinned and you can have as many browsers as you want to so you can have live data feeds and we'll take a look at that in a second but also you can snapshot individual items. Again, this is really useful for augmenting ideas or simply just to build out a base of a story. Or if you typically when people do design walkthroughs of websites, this is one of the ways they can do it. They can have the website up. They can be doing a live walkthrough inside of Canvas. They take snapshots of the pieces they want to work on and then they can mark them up because anything that you can snapshot can also be annotated. So if I go back to my annotation option here and bring change the color then I can simply annotate directly onto that snapshot and again this is another powerful way of collecting notes and information so we've done a little bit of snapshotting but let's take a look at how you can snapshot a live feed so the inputs option is the menu on the right hand side which has the screen on it because these are video feeds coming directly into canvas and you'll see here that i actually have two feeds defined one is the camera built into the uh into the device i'm using but also the other is a laptop that is connected and feeding its output directly into canvas and you can do this from any device that has a hdmi output and what I've got here is a PowerPoint presentation. So if I move backwards and forwards through the PowerPoint presentation on the separate PC, you'll see that it's actually coming up on this system here. Before we snapshot this, though, I just want to take a moment to make a point. No matter how sophisticated the collaboration system is, at some point, somebody's just going to want to be able to present a PowerPoint presentation. 
to tell part of the story. And it's really simple to do that on MT Canvas. First of all, we can turn off the header at the top because sometimes that's a bit of a distraction when we're trying to just look at a PowerPoint presentation filling the screen. In the main menu band on the right hand side, we've got the option to turn on or turn off the header. So let's turn that off and fill the screen with the PowerPoint presentation and then go ahead and pin it and pin the canvas. And so now when I drive my presentation, you'll notice that the entire display area is now being used uh, for the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so let's go back to what we were trying to do earlier. Now there's another neat trick you can use when you've filled the entire display port with a single output. Sometimes it might be easy to manage how you move around the canvas. So the easy thing to do is do what's the show all button, which gives me the entire canvas and I can turn my header back on. And that gives me an easy way of navigating back just to the one bit that I was working on here. So originally we bought this live feed in because I wanted to capture some of the information on it. You saw how I could actually take an individual piece of a snapshot. This time I'm going to snapshot the whole thing. And conveniently there's a snapshot button on the object itself just here on the right hand side. If I hit that, I get a complete snapshot of that display. And what I can do now is I can remove that live feed and it hasn't gone, it's gone back into the menu system over here on the right hand side. So I can pull that feed up anytime I want to, just like this. But I don't need that right now because I took the snapshot and here's my snapshot here. And of course, because it's a snapshot, it means that I can easily annotate directly on top of there. So again, if I bring up the uh, menu, change the color of my pen. I can annotate directly on top of the snapshot. So let's take a look at how you can bring in content from different types of file systems. So the first one we'll take a look at is a USB stick. Now I have one USB stick connected to this system. Here it is here. And I can page through the content that's in here and anything that's in here I can touch, drag, and drop onto the canvas area. Equally, I can navigate through the folders. So I could go into another folder and again, touch, drag, and pop the content onto the canvas, just like that. Now there's another area, uh, file area that you can grab content from. Let's just move across to a clear area, which is the folder on the server that said that uh, canvas is running on so if you look on the finger menu below the snapshot camera there's actually a folder and just like with the USB stick I can navigate through uh, the folder hierarchy and pull out content again just touch drag and drop onto the canvas and in this case what I have are a couple of PDF files now the nice thing about the way Canvas handles PDF files is that once they're pinned, you can go through them like a book. This makes it really nice for people to actually look through uh, PDF content that you've put onto the Canvas or indeed to share that uh, if you're previewing or just walking through something with somebody. And because they're on the Canvas, they can actually be annotated just like other objects. They can also be snapshot. So you can snapshot entire parts of the PDF or you can snapshot uh, individual parts of an individual page just like we did with the website. Now if you recall earlier in the tutorial we talked about another way that you could use the web browser to bring data or information onto the canvas and I want to take a look at that now. And so I'm going to jump to an area that I prepared earlier using a page marker or an anchor point. We'll go through anchor points in more detail in the menu uh, tutorials, but it's, it's a really nice way of just jumping around a very large canvas of information. So what I have here are two web browsers which are looking at live data feeds. So on the right hand side, I've got a weather map and you can see the, uh, this is the UK obviously, so it's raining <laughs> and that's moving across the UK and you can tell it's summertime because the rain's changed direction. And on the other side uh, is a live map of the London Underground 
And because they're pinned, I can actually navigate within them just like I could if I was using these as regular browsers on, on a PC. One point to note here is how neat these browsers actually look, and that's because the header information from the browser has been removed. This is really useful when you're using just pure data information that you want people to be able to look at, because it removes a lot of the mess around the actual information. If I touch on the map, you'll see this little button appears on the right-hand side, which when I touch, turns back on the header information for the browser. So again, just touching on the menu, turning off the header information just makes the data look much easier. The other thing you can do as well from the uh, from the browser menu is take a bookmark. So when you bookmark this page, it actually records the URL of that location. That's really handy if you're taking multiple reports from one URL, for example, and the last step of the navigation is just down into the report. This way jumps you straight to that uh, that starting point. So let me show you how that works. So if we move across into a quiet area of the canvas, just here is nice. Touch and hold, bring up the finger menu, jump into the Google browser. Now remember to interact with the browser, we pin it. And then we go to the bookmark and jump straight to the site that I'm after and because it's pinned already I can actually navigate directly and interact with the objects just like the main browser and again to turn off the outside part make that look nice and neat you just select that option on the on the window there and you can still resize and move the object without the headers on and then just pin it and again you can navigate with the with the tool just like it's in the regular browser Okay, so let's review what we've been through in this tutorial. We created some notes and we augmented those notes with content directly from the web, either via an image or a snapshot or an entire website. We also entered text using the virtual keyboard and we used annotation. In this case, on this device, I used my finger, but we also mentioned that if you're on a device that supports a pen of some sort, that will work as well. We looked at browsers from a couple of different dimensions. We looked at them from taking information from the whole browser to navigate a website, for example, as well as snapshotting. But also we looked at how you can use it as a live data feed. So a sort of a control room scenario, big data kind of implementation, and how to turn off the header from the browser to make the data look real neat and easy to navigate. We looked at how you could take content from a direct feed. So I had a PC with a PowerPoint presentation on. We looked at how you could use the entire canvas as a presentation platform to show the PowerPoint presentation, but also we took a snapshot from it uh, to use on the canvas. And then we looked at how to get content in from different file areas. So we looked at the USB stick and how to touch, drag and drop content directly onto the canvas. And we also looked at the file folder that was on the server that Canvas is installed on and we pulled those PDF files up and how nice it was to be able to navigate through the PDF files. OK, so that concludes this tutorial on how to put content into the MT Canvas software solution. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.